Two minute anesthesia ICP. The normal ICP varies between 5 and 15 millimeters of mercury, and this is very dependent on posture. There are three key components within the skull the brain power chimera, which accounts for 80%, and blood and CSF, which accounts for 10% each. Monroe Kelly Doctrine. This states that the skull is a rigid box and an increase in one component, i.e., blood, must be accompanied by a reduction in the other to maintain a constant ICP. There's three processes which can occur to maintain a reduction in ICP. First of all, reduction in venous blood. Secondly, reduction in CSF volume. This can occur by movement of CSF into the spinal sac, increased reuptake of CSF, and compression of venous sinuses. And finally, reduction of arterial blood. If this doesn't occur, the ICP rise, resulting in brain ischemia, which initially is localised but can become generalised, as shown on the next graph. Y axis is ICP millimetres of mercury, X axis is intracranial volume. As shown on the graph, is initial compensation phase, so increases in intracranial volume result in small increases in intracranial pressure. Then there's a decompensation phase, so small changes of intracranial volume result in significant increases in pressure. This is due to all compensate mechanisms are exhausted. These include, as discussed in the last slide, reduction of venous blood, CSF and arterial blood in the brain. The slope of the curve is dependent on which intracranial factor is, in, is increasing. Therefore, for example, blood or CSF, which is purely compressible, has a steeper slope. As there are three components within the skull, blood, CSF and brain power chyma, Additional amounts, additional volumes of the, each of these components can result in a raised ICP. For example, blood, so a bleed, a subdural, extradural, or subarachnoid hemorrhage. For CSF, hydrocephalus, or brain power chimal lesions, so tumours, or cerebral edema from cerebral infarction. Clinical features of raised ICP are broad. These can be mild or severe, and this depends on if it's an acute or chronic event. History could suggest headache, nausea and vomiting, visual changes, and family members could suggest confusion. Examination could be generalised or localised. Localised signs include six nerve palsy, whilst generalised signs include papillary edema, seizures, papillary dilatation, bilateral torsus, impaired upward gears, cushions reflex, which is hypertension, bradycardia, and abnormal respiration. BTF indications for ICP monitoring include severe head injury with a GCS less than 8 and abnormal CT or severe head injury plus normal CT with two of the following, age over 40, abnormal posturing and an SBP of less than 90 mm of mercury. The methods to assess ICP are broad and can be split up into invasive and non-invasive methods. Common methods include ICP bold, external ventricular drain or EVD and optic nerve sheath diameter via ultrasound assessment. For EVD, the drain is placed by the burr hole into the lateral ventricle and this remains the gold standard. You can determine the ICP pressure as well as drain CSF with the clear waveform. However, they are invasive and there's a risk of infection. The ICP waveform, graph showing pressure on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. There's three peaks. The first is the arterial pulsation, the secondary is the intracranial compliance and the third is aortic valve closure. Changes in ICP pressure wave can suggest an underlying pathology. For example, increase in P1 suggests an increase in systolic blood pressure, increase P2 suggests a reduction in cerebral compliance. Rounding of the whole wave can suggest critical ICP. In the 1960s, Lundberg, a newer surgeon, described the typical macro patterns of ICP and defined them as A, B and C. First of all, it's important to note that each wave has a different duration, A waves. These are plateau shaped and are always pathological. Each plateau can last 5 to 20 minutes in duration and suggests low brain compliance. B. These are oscillations which last 1 to 2 minutes and suggest low cerebral compliance. C. These are rhythmical waves of a lower pressure than Lundberg B waves, usually less than 20 mm of mercury. These are synchronous with spontaneous variations in arterial blood pressure and are non-pathological.